Hi, so I um, just wanted to talk to you today about sales calls. So this is something that I get asked about all of the time. And I'm just going to um, it used to let me add people on and invite people, but it doesn't seem to have that function anymore, which is a bit of a shame because there was a few people that requested this call at uh, this video. So today I want to talk to you about sales calls. Um, I'm going to be really short, really sweet, simple, um, keep it straight to the point because I've got my four month old downstairs waiting for me. Um, and so the thing about sales calls is that if you're selling a high-end product or if you are selling a product where you need to have an interaction and a discussion with someone, um, getting on the phone and speaking to someone properly is always the best method. So I have my backgrounds in sales. I started working in sales at the age of like 17, 18. 18, I started working in corporate sales at the age of 19. By the time I was 20, I was running an, um, a regional sales office. Um, I was managing, training sales staff, um, sales professionals to go out do and do direct selling. So it was all face to face and on the phone. And I then built a retentions and sales department within a startup telecoms company. Not only did I build the team and train the team in sales, but I also put all the processes, the structure together for the for the department um, and how we interacted within the whole business. So it was my job to sell to people um, and sign people up to the product, but also to keep them. So if anybody wanted to cancel or if anybody wanted to leave us, it was my department that took care of that as well. And so my expertise and I suppose my speciality is in sales. That's what I really know. Um, that's my strong point and it's where I thrive the most. So. Sales for me is exciting, it's fun, um, it's it's a good challenge and it's it's really um magical, I suppose, in a bit of a weird way. Um the exchange of a sale is um is an exchange of um gifts and of value. Um and so so many people who look at sales and think it's icky and it doesn't feel comfortable, um are really, you know you can't have a successful business without sales. You, if you don't sell shit, then you, ha you haven't got a business. It's as simple as that. So what I wanted to talk to you today about is sales calls because most of my sales come through sales calls at the moment. Um, I do one-to-one -one coaching, I do group coaching, I do have the membership site. Um, I also have a, a digital creative agency where we do membership site builds, website builds, um, and that sort of thing. And so a lot of the things that I do has to we have to speak on the phone and then I have to sell something at the end of it to sell my product. And so the structure of a sales call then is, um, hi Christine, I see a lot of people who, and I do this, I used to do this too, who offer a free coaching call to get people on the phone and then to sell to them, upsell to them at the end. And I, I recommend doing this if you're new to coaching, if you haven't got very many testimonials, if it's, um, if, if you just want to give some value and you want to get some practice clients, um, I don't recommend doing more than one free coaching call um, or one free coaching hour because um, you've also got to exchange value. You've got to get value back and that's an exchange of money. And so let's talk about this in the context of um, just sales calls in general. So what needs to happen is at the beginning of the call, we need to get really clear on the outcome that's expected and like frame the call. So um, when you're having a conversation and when it's coming around to the um, bit about learning how you're gonna work together, you know, say that, say, um, so um, let's have a chat then about how we can work together and how this relationship can go forward. And um, so you frame the sales call, you set an expectation, you are asking, um, for permission, I suppose, to speak to them about how you can work together. You ask them for permission to sell to them um, and you are asking for permission on how you can have that conversation about the exchange of value. So frame the call like that, like, it, it, you know, the thing that I would say is, okay, so um, let's have a chat then about how we can work together going forward. 
And then obviously the person will say, yeah, that sounds great, okay? So then what you want to do is you don't necessarily then want to dive in and go, well, I can do this, 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 and it's this much and this much and blah, 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 blah. What we need to do is we need to ask the right questions, okay? So if done correctly, you're going to ask questions and you're going to steer the conversation in the way which will then close the sale at the end of the conversation. So this is how we do this. So when you've, in, you've asked for the invitation to be able to speak about how you can work together, and they say, yeah, that sounds great. You say, okay, so what is it that you are looking for support with at the moment? Okay, they'll tell you, make notes. Okay, we want to understand what language they're using. We want to understand specifically the challenges that they're facing. We want to understand specifically the things that they need help with and the support that they require. Because then what will happen is we can then reel that back to them. Well, first they will know 100% whether it's us that can help them with that. And if it's not, please don't sell to them. And um, please tell them and either direct them to somebody else or um, or just end the conversation and just say, well, that's not really something I can help with. But, you know, good luck on your search. And if it is something that you can help with, then fantastic. Make sure you're taking notes so you understand the language that they're using when they're talking to you. And then you can feed that back to them. So for example, if someone is looking for help with um, a website build, so I've been doing a lot of these calls at the moment, custom website builds, um, and they're telling me they want um, a, um, five pages on the website, they want to have a calendar um, link embedded into the website, they want to have the social media platforms. Um, and then what I'll say is, what is the budget that you're working towards? Okay, so it's really important to get clear on not only their expectations, but also how much they're expecting to, to pay for this service. And you'll either get one of two answers. You'll either get, I've got no idea. I've not even researched how much it's going to cost. So I'm open to, to learn more. Or they will tell you what it is that they're expecting to pay. Um, and so this is really helpful because... Um, you're more likely to close the sale when you know what their expectations are. And so from that conversation, you can then explain to them what it is that you provide. You can explain how it is that you can fulfill their needs. And then you know whether or not you can fulfill it within their budget. If not, you can direct them somewhere else. If you can, you can either downsell to a product of yours that is suitable for them, or you can upsell to a product of yours which is even more suitable for them. For example, if I was to be selling a website, okay, so my website solutions start at £147 and go up to £2,000 for a custom build membership site, well, even more than £3,000. If someone was to say to me, okay, I've got, I'm looking for a membership site and um, I really don't have a big budget and um, I'm looking at £500. So if I'd not asked that, how, how much is your budget? They might, I might have considered that they're not very much of a budget is £100. But if they've told me it's £500, rather than going in with £100, I can go in with a higher offer, which is more suitable for them and gives them more. Does that make sense? So if you understand their needs, you understand how much their budget is, you can then sell them the product that's most suitable for them. Um, and that's it. It's really as simple as that. So the structure needs to be um, set the scene, <laughs> explain um, that you... Um, sorry, ask for the invitation to be able to speak to them about how you can work together further, then ask the right questions. So ask the questions about what outcome is expected, what is it, is it that you're wanting to achieve, and um, how is it that you're going to achieve that? What would happen if that doesn't happen? Um, you need to really understand the pain points as well. So if that doesn't happen, what will happen then? Um, and let them explain that to you. Make sure you take down the language that they're using, um, the needs that they have, the outcomes that they require. And then you can explain back to them the package that you can provide, the solution that you can give to them, and then the cost once you understand what their budget is. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, one thing I would always say is at the end of the call always book in the next time you speak so if you don't close the call on on that call make sure you're then booking another appointment and make it really easy for them so say um okay so shall we catch up again about this the same time next week make sure and then add it into your diary add it into their calendar so that they won't forget either if you close the sale there and then um and also a really, really good question to ask at the end of the call before closing is, um, so what do you see as the next steps? 
and they'll, they'll either one, close themselves, or two, explain to you what it is that they need to do before they need um, before their needs are fulfilled to be able to take the sale. I hope that makes sense. So when you ask this question, when you ask, what is it that you see as the next steps? Or what do you see as the next steps going? F <laughs> what do you see as the next steps? They'll tell you. So then you just follow what the next steps are. Yeah. Um, or what you can also do from that is if there are any objections, they'll tell you them. So for example, if um, a price wouldn't be an objection because we've already covered that by asking what their budget is um, and we've sold the correct package solution to them that's fulfilling their needs and within their budget. So you've already covered that objection. Um, if an objection was that they wanted to speak to the partner, you know, that just needs to happen. Um, I know when I'm investing more than a certain amount, I, I, I just want to go away and think about it or I want to go away and speak to my partner. And that's a genuine thing. It doesn't mean anything other than I just want to think about it, make sure I'm making the right decision, journal on it or speak to my husband about it because it's a, a lot of money and he needs input on that. If that's the case, make sure you lock them down for another call. Same time again next week, add it to the diary, add it to their diary. Um, other objections that could come up, they'll tell you when you ask this question. So I hope that was helpful. If you've got any questions or there's anything you need to know, pop a question below. Um, this video is not going to be available here within this group for long. I'm going to take it out and only uh, make it available for the membership. So um, take advantage, ask any questions that you need. Um, if you've not watched the full video, go back to the beginning and watch the replay. Um, yeah. I'd love to hear your input on your sales calls and if there's something that I've not covered that you think is really important on your sales calls, I'd love to hear that too. Have an amazing day and um, if you're catching the replay, make sure you go back to the beginning and watch the full video and whoop whoop to sales calls. <laughs>